Hi, I'm Olivia, and I'm one of the educators here at Ridley's Aquarium. Today, I will be reading A Day in the Deep, written by Kevin Kurtz and illustrated by Aaron E. Hunter. If you dive deep into the ocean, thousands of feet to the floor, you would encounter animals unlike any you have seen before. As you first dive into the ocean, the sun is still shining bright. Brown algae floats near the surface and makes its own food from the light. A few of the fronds of sargassum appear to have two bulging eyes. A fish with fins like the algae waits for prey in its natural disguise. Descending 500 feet deeper, you see sharks with bellies that glow, who are schooling in the dimness. They are small and move rather slow. Suddenly, a marlin approaches, but that doesn't cause them fright. One cookie cutter attacks it and twists it off a circular bite. 1,000 feet below sea level, a fish with protruding jaws waits patiently in the darkness with teeth like a raptor's claws. The viper fish flashes a light on a spine attached to its back to lure in fish and crustaceans. One approaches and it attacks. Descending 500 feet deeper, you barely see the sunlight, yet millions of tiny plankton hide in the depths until night. When the sun goes down in the evening, they rise to the surface to eat. The darkness provides them protection from predators they likely will meet. 2,000 feet below sea level, you notice a beam of blue. It looks like it shines from a flashlight, but a fish comes swimming through. The blue light helps the headlight fish to see food from far away. If a shrimp gets caught in the spotlight, it may become the fish's prey. Descending 500 feet deeper, there in the blackest of darks, a vampire squid turns inside out to hide from an oncoming shark. The frilled shark investigates closer by bumping the squid with its nose. The vampire squid makes its getaway by spraying out mucus that glows. 3,000 feet below sea level, a fish with binocular sight keeps staring straight up above it, though there's barely the faintest of light. The spookfish has long, barrel eyes under skin that is totally clear. The eyes survey the darkness in hopes that some prey will appear. Descending 500 feet deeper, where algae's unable to grow, there always appears to be falling a shower of edible snow. Marine snow, a mix of bacteria, dead plankton, and poop by the ton, allows some animals to feed in a place that cannot see the sun. Four thousand feet below sea level, a fish has been here a week, waiting for prey it can capture with a mouth like a pelican's beak. Pelican eels are not speedy, nor do they have much strength, but they can open their big mouths to swallow prey about their same length. Descending 500 feet deeper, a jelly may soon become prey, but before the atolla is eaten, it lights up like a firework display. The lights attract a large predator, who responds to the jelly's alarm by eating the smaller predator, saving the atolla from harm. 5,000 feet below sea level, a fish who wants to ensure that prey will soon approach her uses a light on her head as a lure. The anglerfish does not hunt alone. Others are along for the ride. 
bacteria that light her fishing lure, and the males attached to her side. You have reached the ocean floor where most animals would not survive. The temperature is always near freezing. The pressure would crush them alive. Yet here at the barren bottom, an oasis of life appears. A dead whale sank from the surface. Some animals will feed here for years. The end. If you liked this book, we also have a craft that goes along with it, a jellyfish. You can find this link to our Ripley's Aquarium web website. See you later.